All right, so today in Paris-Nice, it really was a Jumbo Visma absolute clinic. They showed everyone how to race on the bike. So I think we'll go through the numbers, but and just show exactly how they managed to do it because I think it was a really clever tactic from them. And I think often, myself included, I've really abused Jumbo Visma for not knowing how to race bikes properly. But I think today they really showed how to do it. So anyway, this is the stage. And basically like the last couple bits, uh, if we zoom in here, was a loop. So what happened? So they went up the climb the first time here, then they came round and then went up the second climb back to the finish. Now, the key thing to remember about this is that it was quite windy. So if we look into the run up of the climb, which was about this part here. What you'll be able to see is that the speed is really high, 55k an hour. And there was a wind coming across the screen from here, right? Um, so it's basically like, um, yeah, like a tailwind up the climb, but headwind here. So wind, yeah, definitely coming across here, right? So we look at the numbers here, it was like 330 normalized, but what Yamba Visma did, so not like crazy, crazy hard, but what they did is they really strung it out. And if you watch the footage, you'll see there was like loads and loads of people who were like really struggling. You look here, this seven minutes into including the climb is really hard. But if we just look at this bit here, you can see like 57k an hour into the running of the climb. They go along here, they spat a lot of people in this part here when they turned out this corner, they turn us in on the front, really drilling it, lining it all out. Then they went along here, they had like a UE round here, and then they turned a left, a, sorry, if they're looking at a left-hand corner into the bottom of the climb. And by doing this, what they did is they made it, you can see here like 66K an hour into the climb, then out of it. Um, and obviously Nathan Van Hoydonk was on the front and he absolutely drilled it from the bottom. So you look at this climb, it's, it's like 500 watts of two and a half minutes, which to be honest, on its own is not absolutely bonkers. But what you'll see at the bottom part was done about eight watts per kilo. And Nathan Van Hoydonk, when they ran, went around this corner, was in first wheel. And he just lit it up for about a minute and a bit. And what happened was because Yates, Quintana, some others were out of position. So they all got, they were like stuck behind Degenkolb and some others who caused the split. And this is the thing, because the bottom was just so ridiculously hard, people just sat up straight away. And that's how the gap managed to start. And if we look at the time difference on this segment alone, we'll, we'll bring this up in a different tab. Um, or actually, same tab, Strava doesn't like this. But you can see they went up there nine seconds quicker than Gaudu and Paulus. And that's the thing is that realistically, what happened was Paulus was further back. So like, well, Wout Van Aert was obviously hooning it up. But then there was so much hesitation as soon as there was a gap started. So you can see here, like, you know, the time difference, nine seconds is pretty impressive on a climb that short. And you think he's doing eight watts per kilo. But he's out of position, and if we look at the top, you can really see, again, this hesitation here over the top. They really were like, oh, maybe, you know, what's going on? While Wout Van Aert, Christophe Laporte, and Roglic just launched it, and Laporte went so deep on that last part as well. So they just flew up there. And then the thing is, they had like a 15-second gap um, going into this final part. And people were saying it's a headwind, so, you know, it wouldn't favour people. But ultimately, if we look at the speed... You'll see it was a headwind, but still 53k an hour minus 2%. Like this bit here, it's 70k an hour. Like you're not bringing any time back. So realistically, you only have, let's say when it gets below, like probably this part here, where it's 45k an hour, right? Through the town. Well, obviously wind is less of an aspect. That's when you can bring them back. And you can see here doing 412 watts. Like, you know, it's a hard effort uh, for Powell behind. Um, but nonetheless, you know, you've got three teammates out front, super, super strong. Uh, you know, there was obviously a lot of accusations, you know, maybe not accusations from you, but on Twitter, people were like, oh, you know, this is a bit dodgy, all the rest of it. But the question is, is it that dodgy? And you're like, well, not really. Basically, what happened was that Yamu Visma schooled everyone by stringing out, making it really hard, and then just drilled it over the top. And then Quintana had no teammates. Yates had no teammates. And I made a tweet saying Ineos are now useless. And everyone was like, oh, it's only January. But honestly, it was horrendous tactics by Ineos. And on what they were doing with Yates, he had no one around him at all. I just couldn't believe it. Where was Sivakov, Dylan Van Baal, et cetera, et cetera. But they were all gone. But Jumbo Visma really, like, I don't like them as a team. I find them quite boring and all the rest of it. Um, I sort of like the more rogue teams who just, you know, sometimes win, sometimes lose. Um, but yeah, like, it was really impressive the way they did that. And I think, to be honest, they've shown there that they are a super, super strong team. Like, really impressed by the fact that they knew the run-in so well. They knew to drill it in the crosswinds. And people are like, oh, you can't split it, but you can line it out. And then when they came into it, Van Hoydonk just launched it. They had a plan. They executed it. Wout Van Aert, you know, obviously could have won the stage if he wanted to do, but that was their plan originally, just to cause gaps. But then they drilled it so hard. They did it so well that they actually managed to get a one, two, three. And Roglic is now one GC. Like, Quintana... Okay, for sure, super, super strong at the moment. But you just look at the TT here. Let's say Roglic puts another 30 seconds on, on a 13K TT. So he's 50 seconds up. We look at the hard stages. There's this stage here, which I think no gaps. The other stage is no gaps. And then Colder Torini, 
it's like seven percent like i don't care how good you are you might put 40 you it's gonna be hard to put 50 seconds into roglic and then the final stage again is there's always potential for ambush but i think realistically roglic looks ridiculously good unless he crashes out big favorite again so anyway those are my thoughts on today's stage actually super impressed with yamba visma really lit it up knew what they wanted to do did it and everyone else was napping so anyway that's enough from me and we'll see you in the next one